This is map four of ESL Atlantic LAN at Gamescom between Envious and Rogue. Uh, Rogue is up two to one right now. This is the best of five. So if Rogue finishes this map, they win the game. They win the match. They get all the cookies, but not really all the cookies because this isn't the end of the match. Like this was like, I think winners finals or semifinals, winners semifinals. Nice dude. I'm glad I can be of service in the Seagull Discord. Raise your birds. I have to join the Flock Discord, it looks like, guys. Nice. You guys are all so nice, man. Alright. Let's talk about these defenses. This is Rogue on defense. Um... Straightforward defensive comp. Reaper, Zarya McCree, pretty pretty standard stuff. Um and whatever. There's nothing really to talk about. I've talked about this so many times. This is just a straightforward safe defense. It's like cookie cutter, live your life, you know? Defensive side. Yeah, I'm curious to what the offensive side's gonna go with. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume it's probably <laughs> if you guys see Mabel on your team, just yeah, abandon the match and just take the loss because it's coming anyway, guys. I offered Seagull to coach actually, but I think he ignored me. But I was so down, like I don't really care. I could tell you guys what most teams are doing wrong, or like I think the teams are just approaching the game incorrectly sometimes. I think like teams are very focused on winning fights in the future and not or in the now, but not in the future. So let's talk about Envious's strat. They're running Diva. Okay, guys, this is. This is this might actually just be why they lost. You know? So like again, we're just gonna stop. We're gonna stop and take a second. So like this, 100, you know, like 100, 100, good shit, like thumbs up, like uh, that's not good thumbs, but like thumbs up, 100, mm-hmm, like good shit, right? Like that's this comp. But this comp. We're gonna come over here for a second. This is question mark, question mark, question mark. Where is your Reinhardt, you know? Where is he? This is so hard to make work. Like you have to anticipate wins is on the Zarya. Cause like they've been running this comp pretty much the entire time, the entire tournament they run this comp. Like teams run this comp, this is a straightforward comp. They switch it up against Reunited because Reunited always runs Genji. Envious does not run Genji. So Tivik doesn't have to worry about playing Genji and stuff. But like, you're running D.Va up this choke into this, which is already bad or hard to do. Tailspin doesn't have a shield. Taimu doesn't have a shield. It's all reliant on the diva. This is your diva, and she's in her mech suit, and like she's got all these like wings and shit, and she's got her defense matrix. So your whole team has to stand behind this defense matrix, but like you're not even really safe because winds can like come in and give you the beams. So like this comp right off the bat to me seems like a problem, and like I don't know why they don't want to run Reinhardt here. I think that Reinhardt like shines on this map like more so than most maps because like you get to this archway i love this drawing thing actually like you get to this archway and like you can like just put up an entire shield like here's your shield this is your reinhardt he's just standing here your whole team can walk in behind him and he can charge and charge all the way into the back off the map and you can like you can even do stuff like if you want to like get crazy with comp analysis right like you can run this and then throw a genji in so like tailspin goes genji and then you can say like, okay, we're gonna go Coco and Taimu through the choke, like Zarya, Reinhardt, whatever, or Zarya, McCree. And then have like a D.Va come over the wall with a Genji. And then they just come in from behind. And then the other two come in from the front. And then maybe the Lucio goes over the wall with them. And then the Zenyatta comes in with them and you just pinch them. Like that's a play. Or you can do it with a Winston. You can have like Winston over here and then Harambe over the wall. But like, this is gonna be so hard to run. 
Because you're a diva. You don't want to be walking on the floor with your team. You want to be, like, flying over shit and flying around shit. But, like, they don't. So, um... I'm not sure. I think that this is just a mistake. I, I find that... I think that this is going to be very hard for them to do work with. But... What do I know? I'm just a lowly 83 ranked player, man. Like, what is the play here? They're going for like this flank, Lucio McCree flank. Like, okay, cool. This might be a set play from them, but like, I feel like this. I feel like this is something that works against people that aren't ready for it, but it's not something that works against people who can adapt to it. So they're just ignore. What? Why did he wind up there? Did he mean to do that? That was really weird. So, like, exactly. They have to ignore this entire area. Like, there's actually just nobody on the cart right now. Like, hello? Payload? Team? Not even a 1x. Like, just nothing. Just absolutely nothing. And it's because they can't even fight here, because they don't have a shield. So they're kind of, like, banking on the fact that they can take a fight without touching the cart and then come back for the cart. But, oh, that's risky business. That was, like, actually super risky business. Whatever. We'll keep playing. So see, like, they're pushing all of this. Now one person got on the cart. Okay. Nobody's died yet. The cart isn't really threatening anybody. And they're all fighting through one choke with no shield. Cart's not moving anymore. Um, they did get the kill on Reinforce. Which is a big deal, but like you just traded a Reinhardt, right? The enemy team like never had one. So like now they're down a Reinhardt. Or Rogue's down a Reinhardt, but now MVS is down a McCree. So if AKM lives here, it's really good. It doesn't matter if they lost their Reinhardt so much because the enemy team doesn't have one. So now both teams are just not mitigating damage, but one has Lucio heals. Coco got a lot of ult charge actually from this fight. If they spawn in here, they can defend. I'm surprised that they made that work so well. That kill on reinforce was actually really big. I didn't expect them to just instantly kill the Reinhardt. But if reinforce gets like a good couple swings here and gets our shatter off, like they'll be fine. The thing is though that Coco is so close to ult. Ooh, that was a good play actually. He canceled the High Noon with the Diva Suit, or with the Diva Matrix, like that was really good. But then he trades the suit. Now they actually have no tank. Um, you can like kind of see this fight evolving, which I guess is nice. Um, I don't know who's going to win this fight, by the way, so like, don't flame me if I'm wrong. But Nox has ult. He's about to have ult. About to have ult. Not really that close, but whatever. They actually have no tank right now. There's no mech suit. There's... Zarya's gonna have black hole, but they're about to have transcendence. And then they have dropped the beat as well. They're not close at all to drop the beat, and they're not close at all to transcendence. So like black hole high noon can win a fight, but I would expect Rogue to still be able to win here because if Unko just hits Q or Noxious hits Q, they can pretty much run over. Like Tavik should just be able to run over Envious because they don't have any shields and they don't have any damage block at all. I don't know what's about to happen, but. We shall see, I guess. I so now they black hole, but where's their damage coming from? Tailspin died. The Tivik. And then now, oh, Unko died, but they had dropped the beat. That was really weird. They keep switching the camera, and I think it's I think that's what's screwing me up. But what happened was I think Unko died before his ult could get off. Coco dropped the black hole after Tailspin had already died. I don't think he was if Tailspin hadn't died to Tavik there, they would have probably won that fight because Unko died. Um Taimu got his High Noon cancelled. And then Reinforce hits a big earth shatter. And he's gonna keep hitting big earth shatters, because there's no way for them to block a big earth shatter from him. Um, any time Reinforce wants to ult this game, he's going to get it off, and he's not going to have anything to, like, really mess it up on or, like, to block it, because D.Va can't block it, Reaper can't block it, like, none of these heroes can, like, stop a black hole, like, Coco can stave someone from it, but 
he's never gonna like not hit the people that are on his screen, I guess. But like, look, Internet Hulk is actually just feeding Wins alt. Like, Wins went from zero percent alt to thirty percent in that one push. And since they have no damage block, Tibi can just run at them at that point. He just got a double kill. Yeah, sometimes heroes are their best counters. But like right here, it's still hard. Like you're trying to push up this choke, but you don't have a shield. So like AKM can do all this damage. I like this play. He pops transcendence just to say like they know that they can win a fight. Like they know that they can do damage because there's no block like if they can get damage on internet hulk which like you see wins like wins is at 50 percent alt already like he caught up to coco i think coco was up like 30 before all of the damage that they do right now during this transcendence should result in kills and probably force harry hook to drop the beat and there it is Ooh, big flashbang doesn't kill anybody but their health is really bad right now they're gonna win this push i would assume I think they needed to do more with that transcendence. They didn't get enough done, and they gave Harry Hook enough time to like get his drop the beat. If Harry Hook didn't get his ult off there, they might have not won that fight. But the second he got the drop the beat off, it like gave his entire team the armor, and they would have been fine. But like that's still a really good hold if you're a rogue because you just took like three minutes off the cart or off the time. They're gonna go straight for the high ground, I would imagine. <clears throat> Time is a little bit far up for my liking. Um, they didn't get any staggered spawns and no one got spawn camped. So like, if you're rogue right now, you probably want to dive the cart to get your ults up because you have nothing. Like, rogue is actually at a really big ult disadvantage right now. They don't have any defensive support ults. So like, the play right now is to like try to fight while the cart is like here, like somewhere between like this checkpoint and like this spot. Like this is where you want the cart to be when you take this fight if you're rogue. So you can like come over this way, like your whole team can drop, take a fight here, and just wipe on the cart, and then worst case scenario, your entire team will get ults up, or like most of them will get ults up. Like it'll probably push Nox over top, wins over top, reinforce over the top, and you'll have these three ults if there's a fight in the courtyard if you lose. But like if you win, then you're in good shape and you just do it again, but that's generally the way to play it, um, and that's how teams do play it. And the logic is just like, if you lose a fight here, it doesn't matter because you'll be able to take a fight up here at the capture point. But if you take a fight while the card is, say, between like this point at the beginning of the church wall and the edge of the church wall or like under the balcony, because there's like the archway here, you need to, if the card's here when that happens, you'll be able to capture it before the enemy team can get out of their spawn. Got it. Good. So I expect Rogue to fall down before the cart gets around that bend. Yep, instantly just dives down. YOLO, guys. That was really good positioning from Taimu. He, like, anticipated it and then countered it by placing the high noon from that staircase and caught TV off guard. But again, you don't care. This team just needs to die on the cart. All of Rogue needs to die on the cart. The cart cannot move. I think they lived a little. I think AKM and Unko should have just died with the team on the cart, but it could have stopped them for like an extra like time, like I don't know, an extra like four seconds, two seconds. That's so risky to do. If you if you go for that kind of attack and you fail, then you say goodbye to this entire church phase. However, Chip's actually getting. What the hell is the church phase? What does that mean? Why do they say these things? Passer's triggering me again. Taimu got way too cocky here. Um, Rogue's gonna hold for sure. Rogue's gonna hold. I would just, I hope anyway. Actually, that black hole might have been bad. But they're just overwhelming them. Taimu dying is actually a really big deal. <laughs> Tailspin getting completely juked. So, like, Coco had black hole there, but Taimu died, and they were just so split up. Like, you have to all six commit on the cart, and then wait because you can't put half your team on the high ground and half your team on the low ground i think wins's black hole was bad but it wound up not being that bad because it forced out transcendence from chips so like it worked but it wasn't that good i guess like it could have ended really badly if coco had been there 
because he could have black holed later. I guess Unko had the counter. I don't like the fact that half the team went upstairs and then half went down. I would have rather just Envious tried to have taken a fight, or at least tried to have forced Unko's ult out, but like, Rogue is in a very, very commanding position here. Because like, as we're seeing, again, they just absolutely do not want to run the Reinhardt. Like, why not? I don't understand. I guess on this map, you can get away with it, because like, you're more concerned with controlling this bridge, but like, Reinhardt plus Winston is probably better than just Winston. Because, like, Earth Shatter on defense is so good if you don't have an answer to it. Um, Reinforced is going to have Earth Shatter, and, like, they don't have an answer to Earth Shatter. So, you kind of assume that whenever Earth Shatter's up, Rogue should be able to take a pretty good team fight because they, there's no real counter to it from Envious. But they're doing really well on time. I think he just, did he just kill himself? What just happened? Yeah, I think he shot the Reflect and the Reflect killed him. So that's just a mistake from AKM. But it doesn't matter because Tailspin takes the trade anyway. Tavik, this was a really good play, actually. This was like, question. It, it looks questionable, but it wasn't. Tavik had just killed Tailspin. Tailspin just spawned. He's not actually here, he's spawning. And he pops Dragon Blade. And it instantly forces... Harry Hook to pop drop the beat, so he just backs the hell out. And they know that Chips used Transcendence in the last fight, so now Envious is actually just out of ults. Like, they just wasted drop the beat to save their team from a Dragon Blade that honestly wasn't going to get any kills, and they don't have their own Dragon Blade to combo. So, like, this whole combination of things just, like, leads to a lot of problems. So, like, he pops Dragon Blade, and you're like, why? But it's because he just killed Tailspin. So like, in his eyes, the odds of him dying are pretty slim. I guess, I mean, Taimu can still deal with him. Chips can still deal with him. And Coco can definitely still deal with him. So you're not really that scared of this Genji. You're like, why did that guy just pop? But like, naturally, he pops this ult. Instead of just speed boosting out or running, I guess. I don't know why they didn't just speed boost out. But like, him triggering this drop the beat. Now Rogue know that they don't have drop the beat. And they also know that they don't have Transcendence because they remember the Transcendence from the Black Hole like last fight. So now there's just no defensive ults for Envious. And pushing into this lineup from Rogue is going to be very difficult because they're going to have their drop the beat now before you and they already have their Transcendence. And they still have the Earth Shatter and they still don't have a counter to the Earth Shatter. So like Rogue is just in like a very, very good position right here. Um, yeah. Remember when I said he couldn't really drop a bad Earth Shatter? Well, like, he dropped an Earth Shatter into two people with Bubble. And he dropped... I guess this... I mean, this is pretty bad, I guess, if I was going to, like, commentate on this. But he... He shouldn't... He dies to the High Noon? Or... I guess he dies to the High Noon. That was weird, because Taimu's stunned. Oh, I, that makes sense. He shatters, and then the bullet hits him, and then the travel time from the Shatter kills him. But... He didn't need to drop this. This was, like, bad. And he was going to die anyway, I think. So, like, this didn't need to happen. But it doesn't matter that this happened because they have this. And they're going to have this. As long as they don't wipe right now, they should be okay. And they're not going to wipe because Unko has ult. But, yeah, he didn't need to ult there at all. To be perfectly honest. So Tailspin has his ult, Coco has his ult, and then what's the word I'm looking for? He like drops it, but they still have Transcendence, so like this isn't going to work. And that's kind of like where it goes. <laughs> Great pertinent comment from chat. Some people just want to get banned. I feel like I remember this name from somewhere. I don't know what just happened though. Reinforced blowing that Earth Shatter actually cost them the fight, I think, because. Like, Unko had to pop his Transcendence so early because they didn't have a shield. 
and they were going to lose if he didn't pop it, but he popped it so early that Coco dropped the black hole after the transcendence was like about to end. And then they got the fight because of this Earth Shatter missing, actually. Like, if they saw the Earth Shatter and Reinforce was still alive, they could have held for a, long, a way longer time. But since the Urshire actually accomplished nothing, then like Coco was able to wait until Unko's ult was about to end and then drop the black hole. So the fact that Tailspin died during the black hole wasn't that big of a deal because they still had Taimu and they still had internet health to do damage, but they didn't have a shield anymore for Rogue. Where's Tailspin? And I think he's starting to finally show up in the series. Sadly, the fourth map of the series uh, for Envious here. I don't know why they keep saying that people aren't showing up. Like, it's so hard to tell when someone's not showing up. Like, if you're in a position to succeed and you don't succeed, then you probably didn't show up. But, like, if you're not in a position to succeed and you don't succeed, that just means, like, you were, the odds were against you. But if you're... Hey, look at Akam, dude. He just... The greatest of the high nooners. Casual feed from... Internet Hulk? I don't know why he was there. It's actually a good... This is actually so sloppy. Teams are actually just going crazy right now. Um, Internet Hulk's dead. And it's like 5v5 on the cart. Nox just died mid-animation. If he had gotten it off, they would have probably just wiped them. But since he didn't get it off, Harry Hook thinks that he can take the fight here. But you're down Internet Hulk, and Tailspin doesn't have ult. And you have Black Hole, but you have no combo. So, like, they're going to take a fight here with Drop the Beat, but, like, I don't see it winning them the game. And I think that, like, like what did he just do there? And then Unko responds with a... I don't know why Unko ults there. They're just like dropping ults now right now. Like I think that they're like, I think if you're rogue right now, you're like, shit guys, you can win right now. And then they just like are kind of throwing them down. I mean, it's not bad that Unko ulted because he ulted in response to Harry Hook's ult. So it wasn't probably the worst play. But um, you'd rather, or maybe they dropped the black hole. They did drop the black hole. I'm dumb. They popped black hole and that's why Unko ulted. So that wasn't the worst play. People still died in the black hole, but they traded the black hole for the... Zenyatta ult, or they traded the Zenyatta ult for the black hole. So that was actually a really good play from Unko. Um, and then now they're going to engage with Nox's ult because they realize that Harry Hook just used his, like, kind of questionably. That was a nice shot. And now Time is doing a lot of work, actually. Tailspin hits a black. This is a really good play right now from Nox. Nox just kept the card alive for an extra couple seconds. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but that extra second or two might be big. Oh, it's going to be big, actually. That extra two seconds that Nox just kept the card alive stopped them from capping the point before they got back to it. And that's what I mean. Like, if you're going to take fights aggressively, you need to be able to, like, you need to die on the cart. If you're going to team wipe, team wipe on the cart so the cart's not moving when you die. If the cart pushes up at all while you're dying, while your team is dying, then like you're not getting the most out of the trade. Like if you're going to trade a team wipe for alt advantage, which is like a play, like that's actually a thing, then you should do it while the cart is stopped if you're on defense because like you don't want the cart to be moving while your team is cycling like while they're staggering their spawns. Because stuff like, if if Nox had died anywhere but on the cart, they would have lost. And this like, goes for every point. It's not just the last point. So like him dying right there on the cart actually was really beneficial. And him dying late wasn't the end of the world because he was the last person alive. And if he had died with the rest of his team, they probably would have lost. So that was just a really good play from Nox on the Lucio. Now Tavik got in from the back and is actually plowing. That like one small play from Nox actually just saved them the like save the cap for them. Fifteen seconds 
That was clutch. That was like super clutch from Nox actually. Because Tailspin even Dragon Bladed to like try to secure the cap. But he didn't actually need to Dragon Blade because there was nothing on him. But um, now Unko has ult. So like Unko's ult should be able to delay this point enough for them. And there's still no counter to reinforce his Earth Shatter. So if he hits it here, like they're going to be in a good spot. I don't know what happened because the camera was in a weird spot, but Nox didn't have his ult until the very end, so now Nox is just trying to delay again. But, um... Did AKM just double blink out of the black hole and stop the cart? AKM is actually a god. <laughs> They're doing a really good job of staggering their deaths. Like they just went the car I think it was 58 seconds that they were gonna What? Yeah, it was 58 and they brought it down to 25 just by like Staggering their deaths. That was really good defense from Rogue actually. Um a few mistakes, but it wasn't it wasn't like one person making a lot of mistakes, it was just like each individual player was making different mistakes at different times. But then there were also some really, really clutch plays. Yeah, like, especially too, because when you're on defense, like, sometimes you don't, you want to stagger their deaths, but if you stagger their deaths while they're on the cart, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he's messing up a few ultis, but he's not the only one messing up ulties, I think. I think he hit, yeah, I think he hit two. It, it, like, hit the wall, but I don't think he was ever in a position to hit a good one anyway. Um, it's hard to tell. He had to keep his team alive because he heard the high noon. Like, he didn't really have a play there. I just want to, like, point that out. Because, like, Taimu had popped high noon, so he couldn't drop the shield to shatter. Because if he dropped the shield to shatter, he would have died. So his team dying during the high noon was just a really good play from Envy, not really a bad play from him. And like, if he dies there without using the shatter, it would have just been wor worse because if his team, if he dies and they cap and he still has Earth Shatter up, then that's really bad because it means like you probably might have been able to get a kill or two and every kill matters on defense when like you're in that position. So there was actually no way for him to get, hit a good Earth Shatter in that spot where he hit the wall because he had to keep his shield up because his team was going to get high nooned. So like, relax on the relax on the reinforce hate right there. Reinhardt's very hard to play, especially against players like Taimu because like he's gonna if you're if you're under pressure from a really well positioned and well played around high noon, then like you're not. It's like you have to keep your shield up. Like you, you can't charge, you can't swing, you can't earth shatter, you're gonna die. He's enabling the rest of his team, I guess, is the important part. Um, so they're finally listening. They watch the VOD review on Hanamura and they switch to Symmetra. So like Symmetra's really good on this map. This is probably the best Symmetra map, I would say, if there was like ever a map where Symmetra's great, or a point where Symmetra's great is this one. And um Pretty much like you can put turrets on the back of this, you can put the turrets on the back of this, this, this. You can control this entire, there's like the door here and then there's like that whole room. You can put turrets in this room, you can put turrets on this archway and like keep it. But you can also, the biggest thing is like you, there's only two ways in. You have to come in from here, come in from here. Or I guess you can come in from here, but teams don't really do that. But you can spam beach balls, like Symmetra orbs, like down this choke. You can spam them up this choke. And it's very hard to push into Symmetra orbs. So that's why they're running the Symmetra. I think Inner Help feels comfortable in Symmetra. Symmetra is a pretty good hero in general. Um, but if you'll notice, this is also just a bizarre strategy from Rogue. I don't know if they're going to stay on this. They're running just beefy ass heroes. So like, I guess they want to run the May to put up a wall right here so the team can get in for free. Or maybe they're going to wall them. Maybe they'll come in from this direction and wall right here and just come in for free. Or whatever they want to do. The wall splits up this point pretty well though because there's so much, there's not a lot of space in here. Like you can wall off this choke, you wall off this choke. You can just pick an alley and make it yours, you know? 
So I guess that that's the logic from this comp. Um, yeah, it's definitely different. And I'm glad Rogue is doing like crazy things or just newer things because like it's it's interesting. It's like thought out and planned. Like they have a plan and they're it's not crazy enough to not work. Like they still have pretty good damage because of the Reaper. If this was like a McCree, I'd say that this wouldn't work, but Reaper is very good in this. This is actually crazy. They just went nuts. Like there was no chill here. They're not even going with the cart. This is a cool strategy, actually. I've never seen this before. They don't even care about the cart. They're just putting Harry Hook on the cart, and they're just blowing through this choke. They just want to get kills right now. Instant kill on Coco. Like, that's huge. They don't even have to push right now. They can just slow down and wait for people. Reinforce is dead again. Um... But they killed Coco, so they should be able to just go right now before Coco gets back. But now they're trying to defend with no Reinhardt, and see there's the wall giving them the access to the upstairs, like they got through the choke for free. And then... See there you go, you hit a few beach balls and you get some good kills. Like look at how easy it is to spam beach balls on this map. Yeah, maybe you didn't want the May there, but a McCree definitely would have been able to do more in that position, so he switches. The May was a good idea. I think if they had, I don't, I don't know if they needed a monkey. I think the Winston was overkill. The strat was like very all in to begin with, and now it's even more all in. And I still, I don't actually like this lineup that much. It's definitely more, it makes more sense than Envious's lineup from before, but um. It's a very all-in lineup, but it's better because, like, these two heroes can jump over the wall, but they're not running a Reinhardt, so these three heroes have to kind of stay on the cart while, like, these three kind of go deep. You can do a lot with Reinhardt, or with Winston Genji, though. They need to find this Teleporter, because Teleporter can just win you games, actually, if it's not dealt with correctly. Um, Reinforce jumps in, baits out Chipsigen's ult, that's really big. That was a pretty good trade, I think you're happy if you're Rogue there. Rogue just needs to not use ults right now and just die out. Um, hopefully they all just die out. Please just die out. Yeah, they're just gonna die out. Um, let's just talk about why that was good. I would say... Transcendence is probably the best ult in the game in terms of defensive abilities because like you can keep your entire team alive while the enemy team pushes in. It's very hard to out damage a transcendence. So by reinforce actually forcing the transcendence there, it works very well because he he didn't commit anything, he just jumped in and forced it. And then they're just gonna wipe because who gives a shit? You just baited out transcendence, you weren't gonna win that fight anyway. So they die out, and now they should just be able to take a really easy fight because there's no Transcendence on Envious. Like a black hole right now is going to actually just destroy Envious's day if it's a good black hole. So it's really on wins right now to hit a good black hole to like win this fight for them. If wins gets a good black hole, it's like that's point. Because like look at the alts now, it's 100% in Rogue's favor and they don't have Transcendence. That was not the black hole I expected, but, again, they don't have an answer to it. He didn't even have to hit a black hole, to be honest with you. Like, he just hit one. Um, but what are they going to do, really, on defense here without Transcendence? Like, they needed Transcendence. So, the play of them killing Reinforce was... Or, Re Reinforce forcing Chips and ult before was way better. I don't know that. I mean, I know the outcome of the match. I don't really know the outcome of the map. I don't know the outcome of any of these fights. I'm just like assuming things. Like I'm just making predictions. <laughs> I don't know who wins every fight. I know who wins the maps. I don't know who wins the fights. Is this is there actually a fifth map? Are you guys trolling me? I thought there was only four. 
to respawn back in Taibu with 30 health we were I feel like you guys are trolling me right now I think, I think that there's only four maps I, don't, I know who wins the series I don't know who wins the fights I don't know who wins the maps Uh, AKM goes in. So like, here's why this is really good for Rogue, and it's I guess it's bad. It's not bad. Oh, it is five. So then I'm dumb, and I I actually didn't know. I thought Rogue was gonna win this map. Um, whatever. This heart getting this far is really big deal. Um, AKM dies, but who cares that AKM dies because the cart's still moving. Rogue had to switch classes, or Envious rather had to switch classes because they had a comp that didn't work. Um, they had the Reinhardt and the Symmetra, and now they have the Zarya and the Winston. These heroes just don't have ult now. Like, them having to switch the heroes is pretty bad. Um, it's not bad, it's just it is what it is. Like, because they were on different heroes, now the ults are reset. So the fact that Rogue used five volts to capture at that point isn't actually the end of the world because Envious had to switch two heroes and now they just don't have ult at all. Um, yeah, that's that. But they're getting good card time even though AKM died is the big thing here. And they're anticipating them jumping down, but they're not. So they're just taking their free card time with the two tankiest heroes that can't die. So now they drop down, but they don't all drop down. And Tavik's actually really scary up here, because he has control of this upper ledge, and he has Dragon Blade. But the cart's still moving, you see this? Like, if you're rogue right now, you're content. You don't care. The cart's still moving. Tavik's still there, and Envious doesn't have anything except for Transcendence. And if they use Transcendence too early, then Tavik's going to Dragon Blade after, and probably do a lot of work. That is a fat Zarya. That Zarya had a lot of charge. That wasn't questionable. Tavik just got three kills, and it's like 3v3, right? Um, He just wants to win right there. Like He wants to make sure that his team wins this engagement. And then... That's his play. The thing though is that Wins is just going nuts. Like, Wins, I don't know. Coco's really high charge, but Wins gets a really big black hole here. And it's all just like. What's the word I'm looking for? It's all just a consequence of that transcendence forcing them to come in. And like, AKM, I think, had just gotten a kill on Coco. So Wins doesn't feel any pressure to drop his black hole. And like again, Envious is just not running a Reinhardt. So that Transcendence was actually really good because it kept his whole team healthy for the next fight. Envious had no ults to or defensive ults to like keep their team he healthy. And then Wins just hits a black hole to seal the deal. Coco dies but drops black hole and he hits like three or four people so it's not that bad that he dies but their damage is still kind of lacking um, at that point because I don't think Tailspin was alive so popping black hole without Tailspin around is like pretty rough but the cart's still moving like any alt that they bait out of Envy while the cart is moving is like not that bad AKM I don't know if I agree with that transcendence, but like they need to be more groups. Like when you're gonna pop transcendence, I think you need to be grouped. Like you need to be way more grouped than this. Like their team is very split up here, so the transcendence wasn't gonna ever work, and now they're just rolling them over on defense. Like you'd rather use transcendence to like enable tv to get kills or like charge but like look how the ults right now are so in envious's favor right now 
So like they can take one fight where they just delay the cart with monkey ult, they can take a fight where they just pop transcendence, and then like maybe by that time that ult's done, they'll have dropped the beat. And that's kind of how you want to like take your defensive fights, is just like one really good ult to secure a team fight for yourself. They're just going in, man. That was very committed, I guess is the word. But they didn't trade any defensive ults. They just went in with a speed boost death blossom and a... Why does Chips pop ult there? I don't think Chips should have popped ult there. I think that was bad. Half his team was already dead. I don't think that that transcendence actually saved anybody. But Taimu did spawn at the end of that. And now he's just plowing. That was good. I mean... It worked out, I guess. I didn't expect that to work out. Taimu actually is playing really well right here. He's just... Wow. I guess the Transcendence wasn't the end of the world because they had forced it out of Unko. So since they forced out of Unko, like, using it back isn't the, like, worst idea. They're very even right now in terms of support ults, but they're gonna have Black Hole for wins. So if wins hits another... Like, if wins hits a good Black Hole, they should be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I think he saved himself from the Deadeye, but sometimes I think it's better to not pop Transcendence for Deadeye. Like, I think you just have to accept your fate. I don't know, it's weird. Sometimes it's worth it, but sometimes it's not. See, like, Taimu shouldn't be able to get that kill on Reinforced. It's because he held the Earth Shatter for so long, or the High Noon for so long. Look at Taimu, man. He's just going. He's hitting his shots, man. Spins the camera just so we can like piss off everybody in the, the they can stall out. They can <laughs> piss off everyone in the spectating. Yeah, this is really good defense from them. Like this is very cookie cutter defense. Um, if Chips can get his ult before the black hole goes off, they'll be in a really good spot. They couldn't use the black hole dragon blade combo there. They're gonna use it now. Chips still doesn't have ult. Why are they not getting any kills? Wow. This is actually so tight. Because Chipsijin didn't get ult. If Chipsijin had ult, they would have held that hold, or they would have held that fight, but they don't. Internet Hulk is actually so good at dropping that Winston bubble at like the perfect time. And like he baits. They weren't going to win anyway, I don't think, because Tailspin had gotten in from behind, but that was a really good play from Internet Hulk to delay that card there with the... I think the Winston bubble blocked there with Shatter, and like that's all it took. I actually thought that... Um, what's it called? I actually thought that Rogue was going to win there. Like I know that this went to five maps.